as amazing as grace, it is hard to explain. And um, so we were talking, and I'm sorry for taking up too much time, but for some reason this is important this morning. Go ahead, um, in Ephesians, I can't even find it right now. I thought I had one more. It talks about God's grace. And it says, Ever unto every one of us, this is you, this is me, this is everyone, every person in the world. It says, But unto every one of us, given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And Ron mentioned this to me in class. He said, well, What about like a gift? You know, like on your birthday, you get a gift. It's not necessarily because it's, you deserve it. It's because, or maybe on your birthday, you just ever had someone give you a gift? Just because they wanted you to know they were thinking of you and they love you. What would call you deserve it? It's because they loved you enough and thought of you enough that they wanted to show you a way. And then that got me to thinking about Jesus. You know, when Jesus died on that cross, God, he showed us grace. It was something we didn't deserve, but he, would, he loved us so much that he was willing to die for every sin we've ever committed or we ever will commit. Amen. And that, that is a gift that we could never repay back. And God knew that. And that's why he sent Jesus to sacrifice for us. And then I thought about the part of the scripture, faith. And, you know, faith, we think about, and I thought about doing this, you know, it, and there's a scripture, I believe it's Hebrew, it's talking about things not seen. But we, when we see things, we believe it more, right? But faith is not about that. It's about believing and trusting in God. Even though we can't see it with our physical eyes, we're trusting. And I thought, you know what? If every one of us in here just for a moment went blind, how much easier we can see God. Now, your kids might not get that, but I'm sure you adults do. But sometimes it takes us closing our eyes to be able to focus and to be still and to see God. And it has just been, I don't know, my head's just been going crazy. Y'all know I get tired. But I thought about another word that really meant a lot to me, and it's the word mercy. Because sometimes mercy and grace is kind of tricky. They, to me, they go together. Because of God's grace and His love, He shows us mercy. And I was thinking, now how could I explain mercy? And the only thing I can think of, Mr. Jimmy Cox is not mine. But I told Mr. Jimmy to get ready. Y'all see that guy over there with a Well, let me go on and confess this too. I probably shouldn't say this. It's a bad example. But Miss Tina, sometimes in church, you know what? Did you know the devil comes to church? He does. He tries to tempt us not to pay attention to God, not to focus on him. And do you know, once when I've actually wondered once, the devil has come to my mind and he says, if you only have one of those little guns with the suction cups on the end, then you could get you right in the back of that sleep bed. That is so awful of me, isn't it? That I would think that. But I have been I need to get something off, you know, moms think their babies are not going to survive without. 
mentioned a while ago, was these that most of you adults got, and hopefully some of you teenagers. But I think once you get to a certain age, you need to start taking a, a hold of the plow handle, trying to keep the plow straight. I couldn't plow the first time I ever tried it, it was straight. I tried to follow what Daddy had done, but I learned with time. But these are our things right here to where if we get ready to be all reorganized, I have to ask you to complete your name at the top. Can you hear what you feel like God is leading you to be a part of this coming year? Give it to me, or either put it in that little uh, uh, letter folder here going into Sonia's office, and we'll compile all the information and give it to the nominating committee. I'd like to ask you to please be a part of that. Please. Now then, we're going to go into a segment of this uh, program today. Some of you, I guess all of you got messages over the phone three that Kenny Evans is not here today due to a mix-up in scheduling. I apologize for uh, our portion involved in any of that. Uh, I thought he had written down and he thought he was supposed to come and uh, we didn't communicate throughout the year. But uh, <coughs> I knew when he left last year, he was coming the first Sunday in July this year. And I'm not trying to throw blame, but uh, it was just told through the total area. He said he didn't want to take his name out of heaven and go do what? Uh, we would just go forward with a, a program here of uh, patriotism. And he's up in Tennessee today, so keep him in your prayers. Um, patriotism, to me, is a word that's uh, it's never lost its meaning. I think it has some action lost in our society today. Uh, we don't think about being a patriot, a person that makes a difference in the eons of times, like what some have in the past. But you know what we're doing today will make as much difference in God's last time to stand as it did in times past. And I'll cover all that in a few minutes. And we're going to start out here with a video, and then we're going to do a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And then I'd like to have a few minutes of your time to speak on patriotism from the scriptures, from the scriptures of God's Word. I'm going to go to Jerry's and put it down.
either at J. Rubin or at Conway Law Enforcement Center, where they have been having uh, uh, church services there, it's going to be disallowed because somebody complained. There's enough of us that live in Ory County or to complain enough to get that started back because that's a part of our history. We're letting people take away our history. We're standing around doing nothing. And we, we came from a, uh, a, a heritage of people that would not stand back and let that happen without doing something. All these Supreme Courts that are uh, judging things now and, and are making decisions, I'll be honest with you, uh, they can't be godly people making the decisions that they're making. Amen. We're under the lead, leadership of ungodly people. If you want to read what it's like to be under the leadership of an ungodly king, read any portions of the Old Testament for very long, and you'll find out when Israel got under the leadership of an ungodly king that everybody suffered. Amen. People died. The, the economy went. Nobody was able to stand. They were even in prison. Israel at one time was in prison for over 400 years. 400 years she was in prison. But what does it talk about being a patriot? I want to share with you just a few verses here. Found over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. You may say that this is a direction to a young preacher. Well, it is. But I also like, would like to bring something out to you here and, and see if things make a difference. They sometimes make you think what you taught here over the last 30, 40, 50 years is not remembered. Someone shared with me this morning that this little cross was made here in this church 40 plus years ago. It's made of cardboard and eggshells glued on the front. It was made, I think it was a vacation Bible school, but it was made during a Sunday school time. Over 40 years ago, it's still being carefully kept and handled properly. During this same type of trying time of training, it's talking about a lamp. And it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. This was made also at the same time. And the young man that made this is in our midst. And he said he's never forgotten what he's been taught at Dogwood. That's what I'm talking about. What are we teaching our children to remember 40 plus years from now? Do they remember that we were committed to church? By the way, I was also told that when these things were made, that Stan had a lot of hair. <laughs> I don't know if I just don't say that. That is proven. It's hard to like that a little bit. But seriously, if these elements right here would last 40 plus years and would be alive in the memory of a young boy who grew into a young man, and he remembered what he was taught, he had valuable lessons that was taught to him 40 plus years ago, how important is us today that we also live an ongoing lifestyle that it would make a difference in the lives of others 40 years from now. I hope that somebody would remember that 40 years from now, they would remember back that Seth came out from the camp and his prayer request was God bless those that give their heart and life to you this week. I hope that's the kind of stuff that's to be remembered. Folks, that's the valuable stuff to be remembered. How things look at a certain date and, and all that. I mean, these things are all beautiful. I thank God for everything anybody does for the appearance of the house of God. But teach, teachings that are lived to make a difference. Look at what Paul said to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 1. He said, I charge thee for, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Now you were saying, wait a minute, this is just to a preacher. It's to all of us. He's saying there in the scriptures, live the word. Preach the word. Live the word. That's preaching. Living God's word is preaching. 
Live for it. Do people think that you're a pretty good preacher out there in living life for Jesus? Do people even know that you were a Christian? Uh, I mean, uh, being a patriot back in the day when they signed the Constitution, did you realize those men that signed the Constitution of the United States of America were putting their lives in jeopardy? Their targets put on their back right then when they signed that Constitution back in 1776. There was a bull, uh, bullseye put on their back. They were a target from the British Army there, and they were a target because we were trying to get free from the bondage of Britain. Friend, we don't need to go back under the bondage of Britain or China or any other country. We need to remain Americans. And that includes being caught up under to a Muslim country. But folks, it's going to make a difference when we make a stand. We're sitting back. People blame Madam O'Hara for taking prayer out of school. She didn't take prayers out of school. We stopped praying in the homes a long time before that. But the court judged in her favor because we didn't go stand against it. It's our fault that we didn't go stand against it. Us baby boomers should have been standing up and hollering. But we stood back and said nothing. That's when it happened, folks. We walked around and enjoyed success for so long that we failed to believe that we could lose it. But we could lose it in the United States of America today. And I'm not trying to say that anymore. But Paul said to them, dear, praise the word, be answered in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Listen, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're here. If we've ever been here, we're here. Amen. People will believe anything today other than the Word of God. They'll justify what they want to do, come to church when they want to come to church, pay their tithes when they want to pay their tithes, stand up for the Lord when they want to stand up for the Lord. Guess what? You mark my word. Unless the uh, 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 Caucasian people of Obie County start taking some pride in Obie County, the age of black, blacks and Hispanics will vote Tenabu, Tenubu, whatever her name is, into office. She's a professional politician. And I've never done this in a full bit. But I'm saying white people have stayed home and allowed other ethnic uh, groups to go get what they want, and it's our fault. You have got to be involved. Same thing at church. People don't get saved because we don't go witness to them. We're going to go tell them about Jesus. Or let the preacher go there. Or let the deacons go there. It's everyone else's responsibility. We're all in the army of God. We all stand to lose. He said, Well, there's time to come when they're not Jewish down, doctor. But after their own lust, seeking in themselves, teachers having kicked the ears. We are living in the most lustful society that has ever existed. Even more so than it was in the days of when. Uh, uh, David and Bathsheba done what they done, or Satan and Delilah done what they done. They lived in, in just uh, uh, just lustrous situations. But listen, even that failed. Samson's eyes were uh, burned out, and he died as a result of his sin. Folks, we can't keep doing nothing. All these wars that's been fought that uh, we're talking about setting up, and uh, we want to have a a day on that, and I didn't mention that earlier. I meant to, but I think it's August the 25th that we're talking about doing that on a Saturday, having a military day. Listen to me, friend. All those wars that's been fought, most of them has been on other properties of other nations. But the time is here that it could occur right here in the United States for a very simple reason. We Americans are becoming a, min a minority. Because we, a majority of the people that are coming here now, they are recognizing their, where they come from before they recognize of being an American. They're overtaken. I'm telling you, it's a bad problem. We need to have a group of young people coming up, teenagers, 20 year old, 30 years old, need to be taking a stand, live like Americans, be willing to stand and tell your congressman and your senators what you believe in, be in the modern age of text and email, send it out, tell Tim Scott or somebody like that how did you really feel about it. Tim will listen. I've emailed him myself personally. <clears throat> Tim is a person that will listen. 
I, I'm sorry, I encourage us to get involved. Our nation is in danger. And I believe it. We've got the greatest army on the face of the earth. They admitted it said because they have reduced us to the size of our army that nations don't fear us. Let me tell you, nations still fear the United States military. They still fear the incoming of our uh, Marines there hitting on their shores. They uh, fear the, uh, our armies, our navies, our air force, our coast guard. They fear us because we have power, we've got technology, and we, but we, most of all, we've got people that care for society. We'd go fight on the shores, lose life by the thousand, trying to deliver democracy to a people that don't want it. We defend democracy here in the United States. You will see today, if time would stand, that you've never picked up a gun in your life. But you will see today we'll be protecting our own areas. And it's soon to be coming. Let me read this quickly. That's just my thing. It says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto faith. Already have it. People rather believe something other than the truth. But watch thou in all things and your afflictions do work with evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministries. For I, uh, Paul said, for I am now ready to be on. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said in verse 7, and I have this highlighted in my Bible. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Friend, I ask you today, as an American today, have you fought a good fight? Have we defended the remarks? Have we defended the freedoms that we had? They're slowly being taken away. We're not allowed there to have this anymore in the school. We're not allowed to have that anymore in the school. We're not allowed to have the Ten Commandments in the courthouses. We're not allowed now to have churches uh, in, in the courthouse or in jailhouses there. If they ever needed to hear the Word of God, if they were incarcerated, they need the Word of God. Amen. What is it going to come to? Are they going to come to the doors of our church and say, you cannot preach the Word? They're already doing that. They're saying today, if we speak against homosexuality, that we as preachers can be treated as uh, uh, hate people. And they can even incarcerate us for preaching the message that uh, homosexuality is not what God approves. That's something that man has picked up. The Bible that says that it's even an abomination. But also there, he said lying is wrong. He said stealing is wrong. He said lusting is wrong. Folks, we need to preach all of God's word. Amen. Don't back up on that, the whole book. Friends, we've got to take a stand. Your children, you got moms and dads, you got to take a stand for your children because they're going to be devoured in this year false teaching. They're going to be devoured in thinking that living an alternative lifestyle is okay. They're going to be devoured in the thinking that living together outside the bonds of wedlock is approved in the sight of God. I even heard a person arguing on TV where they didn't have weddings back in that day and they didn't have courthouses and they didn't have their uh, legal uh, uh, type situation. Let me tell you, Jesus himself, his first miracle was performed at a wedding ceremony. Amen. So he must have thought pretty highly of it. Friend, don't let, don't let, don't let being an American.